Hello my soccer universe. To no one's surprise we have the first team qualified of course in Germany. The hosts schedule also working out for them. So it was also an easy wardrobe choice for me. Germany is the only team that won yesterday. I was a whole lot more excited for the draws by Albania and by Scotland because I really like both of these teams. Albania because they're so rank outsiders and actually gave a good account of themselves. In Scotland I really have some hope that they will for the first time qualify from a group stage. Still a little bit of a steep climb, but maybe it is possible at this very moment. We just gotta see. But we also have to talk about my Jersey matchup bingo. I was so happy that I got the Croatia-Albania matchup right. I really want Albania to play in all black. This is such a great looking kit. I was immediately looking whether I can still get it. Not in my size, unfortunately. I had a fear that maybe the red jersey, which is not a bad one, will make an appearance but so happy that it was all black and then and yes probably i should have read a little bit more in the social channels germany decided in their nominal home game to wear the away jersey for none other reason than marketing which is kind of weird because that kit is almost sold out everywhere in fact it's the fastest selling germany away jersey of all time i can i guess see the appeal especially for fashionistas and so on and you know the messaging behind the whole thing you know inclusivity blah 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 i'm still not on board with that jersey i think that this jersey and the green one that i have hanging there this is much more typically german away jerseys than this pink purple thing that they're having also have to mention the walker check i mean the whole german training gear is just top notch retro designs that I absolutely love. It's all 96, you know, when they became a European champions the last time. But also the walkout jackets have to be mentioned because they're very customized. For every player, there's a little map of Germany on there pointing to where they were born. Really cool stuff. And there's a little patch. If you have 100 international games, you get a golden patch. If you're 50, you get a silver patch. Absolute top notch stuff. Really have to say Adidas doing great work there. Not so sold on the Adidas templates overall. But I think what they did for Germany is working out really, really, really well. And then the last one, of course, Scotland against Switzerland. It was as expected, Scotland all navy, Switzerland all white. I thought that Switzerland could potentially play in the home jersey, but I guess the dark red might be a little bit too dark. So I want to start chronologically. Let's start with Croatia Albania, which was the funnest game. And again, whenever some Eastern, Southeastern European teams are meeting at these Euros, you get something great out of it. <laughs> you know, Turkey against Georgia, now Croatia against Albania. It's always emotional. There's always a whole lot of fun in there, of course. Uh, many Croatian fans, many Albanian fans in Hamburg. It must have been a great occasion to be there. And the game fully delivered, I would say. Although in the first half, Croatia looked extremely sluggish, being very much pressed by Albania early on and yes Croatia tried to pass it out but it seemed kind of slow and they never really got a real chance in the first half whereas Albania through the pressing often gained the ball and early Asani cross hits Lachi on the head and it's 1-0 already in the 11th minute and then we're plenty of chances for Albania to make it 2-0. I mean, I think Aslani had a pretty big one that he should have buried. If it would have been 2-0 at halftime for Albania, it would have been fully deserved. There's no doubt about that. However, crucial changes for Croatia at halftime. Pajalic and Sucic came on for Brozovic and Lovromaja, and suddenly there was a whole lot more speed in the game for Croatia. But also crucially, for some reason, Albania decided to sit deep. No proactive pressing anymore. I mean, maybe early on in the second half, but later then, I always thought that they, yeah, let's defend this home. No. This is exactly what got you in trouble then, because you were almost always on your back foot. And then very quickly the game turned turn around when uh, Budimir assists, Kramaric takes on, makes a quick move and can pull it more or less in the empty net. Then there was another big chance shortly thereafter and then really just a few seconds after that one, after a Sucic a shot that is parried by Strakosha, it falls onto Jazula's legs and into the own net. Jasula, who had just came on, who actually grew up in Germany. There's a, some funny story, but on an English journalist will not make a whole lot of sense. And so Croatia had turned around and seemingly got the win out of this one. They were pressing a little bit more for maybe to get a third one, but the more that the game went into the last stage, it became the absolutely wild again. You know, no tactics what, whatsoever. Every team tried to dart left and right, but Albania were now the team that were chasing the game and Albania were creating chances. However, very often couldn't get their shot off until the ball goes to Jazula, 
who makes up for his own goal and scores the equalizer in the 95th minute and then he also trips up Modric to get a yellow card so he comes on he scores an own goal he scores a goal he gets a yellow card he pulled in a full shift so really great game when it ended it was kind of can we have a few more minutes of that because both teams were then really going for it because the draw doesn't help anyone both lost their first game now they have one point against supposedly the easiest opponent in their group they have tough games coming up so it really leaves them on the outside looking in and that's never a good position to be in then over to stuttgart where germany were facing hungary after this brilliant performance that they gave against scotland but we all knew that scotland also played a big part in that one by actually not really showing up or not knowing exactly what to do against germany and germany having more or less free reign hungary was a completely different opposition and before we go into the game i have to say if hungary would have shown this dedication against switzerland they would not be on the brink of elimination right now Hungary were actually quite well in the game, created early chances and Marco Rossi really is smart the way he sets up the team. He's pressing the Germans, he's taking away kind of the sand that have, have, have to go from the outside. Hungary were well into this game and Hungary have been a little bit of a nemesis for Germany as of late. I mean Germany didn't even get a win against Hungary where everyone expected that Hungary is the weakest team at the last Euros and then in the Nations League they were beaten at home, I think got a draw away. So Hungary have been a really tough opponent for Germany and it showed. Yes, Germany were overall the better team because they just have the better players. But it was no cakewalk for Germany whatsoever. As I said, early chances on for Hungary, but Germany controlled the pace of the game most of the, of the time. They took the lead through Musiala in the 22nd minute, which was kind of an unlucky sequence of events, where a ball goes to Gundogan, who sort of trips up Orban. It was not really a foul if you see in the replay, then the goalie Gulagi doesn't know what to do because the ball goes there and Gunduan runs forward, gets the ball ahead of him, passes it back to Musiala who then yanks it into net or a slight deflection on there as well. Honestly, I think I'm fine that this was not given as a foul, but I think if I'm hungry, I would probably be a little bit aggrieved at this goal, especially later on there was a situation in the German box where it was given as a foul. I know Danny Makele is a referee that lets it run very often, so it made kind of sense, but it was a little bit of a weird one. And then Hungary had to come out, I mean it was a free kick by Sovoslai that Neuer had to save, it was a really good save there. They even got an equalizer to Schalai, but it was a offside. Second half, Hungary again, putting Germany in the back foot. There was a really good chance, a header uh, by Varga that went wide and you really thought, you know, well, Germany is overall seemingly in control of the game. This Hungary side is really dangerous. However, once Gundogan beautifully taken shot, makes it to nil. There was only one winner. I think that was get, got Hungary beat. Hungary did not bounce back and then I think it, it could have even been a higher scoreline. I would say it was a hard fight but also it felt a little bit like a routine win for Germany because everything fell a little bit their way along the way. But yeah, Germany threw already at this point because even if Scotland would have won, this would have meant that Scotland are level on points with Switzerland. However, having the head-to-head -head over Scotland would have meant that Germany for sure is in the top two regardless of what the other results will be. However, there was even no need for that because Scotland and Switzerland play out a 1-1 draw. A very curious 1-1 draw. Maybe let's put it that way. This was a fighting match. This was not high class, especially in the second half where Scotland basically pulled Switzerland down to their level. Switzerland are the better footballing team and it showed especially in the first half. However, Scotland can do one thing. Run and fight and put in a shift every single time. And this is what we want to see from Scotland. Again, if Scotland play like that against Germany, Germany will not win 5-1. Also, this was more the Switzerland that I expected to see during the Euros. So kind of a nondescript performance by the Swiss as well. Scotland actually took the lead because McTominay launches a counter-attack by heading it out from the back when the Swiss were kind of pressing forward. And then it goes really, really fast. Ball comes to Robertson, it goes back. Uh, then McTominay takes a shot after a Callum McGregor assist. And the shot, which was not a hard shot, Sommer could have saved it, but Fabian Scher tries to save it as well into his own net. Swiss were not on the same page, and so Scotland got an early boost in this one. Switzerland still though, trying to pick themselves up, got slowly into, into the game, and you could see especially in the first half, as I said, they are the better footballing team. The equalizer though came 
almost out of nowhere. Scottley were passing it around in their own back line and then there was an errant pass going back towards the goalie, almost nowhere. The Chakiri sees and with one touch and a brilliant shot, it was an absolutely magic goal. World-class stuff. I mean, he's always able to produce these goals. He doesn't produce much else, but he is always able to produce such goals. The way this goes is just perfectly placed from a very weird angle. Great equalizer. And then the Swiss had the momentum. The Swiss got going. They got seemingly go ahead goal through Ndoye. However, it was an offside. I was for Scotland in this game. Let's just pull it straight here. But I really felt that Switzerland is only a matter of time until they take the lead. Second half though, Scotland really stopped Switzerland from playing their game. And it was all played on Scotland's level. And Switzerland let it be played at this level as well. Yes, the biggest chance of the game fell to Ndoye, who had another glaring chance. Wide open net, the shot is slightly deflected. And so it is not in. But then it was Scotland pressing and creating actually some some chance. There were some near goal line clearances by the Swiss as well in there. So I felt that Scotland might actually push for the winner here. And then Mbolo seemingly scores the winning goal. No, it was an offside as well. And in the end it ends with a 1-1 that was quite reflective of the game overall. So if we look now at the latest projections, I mean, Switzerland still can catch Germany with a win and win the group. However, they are set on to be in second place. Scotland now ahead of Hungary have a chance to move on, especially if they get the win over Hungary. Draw might not be enough because two points usually don't see use through. And you already see the Croatia and Albania a little bit on the outside as well. But with Scotland now being in third place and especially Croatia, it also means that in the third place standings, Austria suddenly move into fourth place. Yes, they have a game less played, which always plays into these standings. But now, this is the only change to the bracket that suddenly Austria is in there and they move now against Slovakia, where they would, of course, be favored. And then they will play against France. And that didn't look right to me at first, but when I look at the schedule, yes, if it really happens this way, Austria will play France again already in the quarters. Weird scheduling, but yeah, with third place teams, you never know where to go. Today, we have actually two really nice matchups. We, in fact, we have replays of the semi finals from the last Euros. But first, Slovenia against Serbia, another Balkan meeting. Expect emotions, expect emotions. This could potentially be a fun one. I remember at Euro 2000 when Slovenia played what was then Yugoslavia, which was mostly Serbia. Now, this was one of the most exciting matches ever seen at the Euros, where Slovenia had a 3-0 lead and the Serbs then pulled it back to 3-3. Not sure if I would expect it quite the same, but expect emotions and expect a really interesting match there. Denmark against England, I don't expect it to be a great match. And then Spain against Italy, this should be a terrific match. Both teams like to play. Let's see, Spain has been a little bit of a nemesis if it wasn't for that semi-final win but then Spain won two Nations League semi-finals against Italy so really interesting but at the Euros Italy had Spain's number as of late so will be interesting in any case please let me know what you thought about the games yesterday give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye